Welcome to the Greybeard Chronicles podcast. Your hosts, Brian Halstead and Kevin Harkins, are two gray bearded patriots who love God, their family and friends, and their country. The gray beards are here to inspire, inform, and educate you on a myriad of topics they are passionate about. Brian and Kevin have a strong desire to share this with you to help you live your best life. Sit back and enjoy this amazing podcast as the Greybeards pass along the wisdom of the ages. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Greybeard Chronicles. I'm Brian Halstead. And I'm Kevin Harkins. And Kevin, we're here to pass along some wisdom of the ages. What the heck does that mean? We're not perfect, but we do have gray beards, and that means we've got some significant life experience some life lessons, and some perspectives that are worthy of passing along. Well, I think that sums it up nicely. Let's get to it. Kevin, good evening, sir. How are you? I'm doing great, Brian. How are you tonight? Uh, Man, I am, I am, I can hardly control the, uh, the excitement that I've got going on here about what we're, uh, what we're going to do on this podcast tonight and who we've got here as a special guest. I am with you. I am with you on that. And it was fun to to have just a couple minutes to talk to our guest and uh, kind of get warmed up and that was a good start so i'm i'm ready to jump in if you are yeah yeah you know um folks that have been listening and now watching us on youtube you know this is uh the youtube thing is somewhat new to us and uh the the gentleman that's uh, going to be joining us as a guest tonight folks that are listening on the uh on the audio version you can't see him yet but uh folks that are watching might actually see him depending upon when we cut this um and and where it actually starts but uh just a little background man i've been watching videos on youtube for years and um i uh, started growing a beard several years ago and um was looking for information about you know taking care of a beard and so on and so forth and i came across this guy on youtube that just had a wealth of knowledge uh about uh uh, beard care and he had a, a freaking glorious beard himself right and uh, man, just enjoyed the videos and, and enjoyed his just the way about him and, and the way he shared information with people. And so I've been, you know, watching his videos off and on ever since then. And, you know, Beard Care is, is about that much of what this gentleman talks about. And uh, he has got some incredible information that he shares with, with his folks that, uh, that watch him on YouTube. And uh, he's changing people's lives every day. And uh, I'm just, I'm very excited to be able to, to share him with the folks that are listening to our podcast and, uh, and watching these videos. So, yeah, I, I, I just wanted to add to that. that it's, it's interesting the journeys that life takes you on. You, uh, you start out uh, making beard videos and the next thing you know, you are having a tremendous impact on, on the world in all kinds of ways that you never imagined. And uh, I, I just love that life does that to you. So that's part of what this story is all about. Yeah. So folks that, that know him from YouTube or whatever platform you may have found him on, he needs no introduction. Uh, but this fine gentleman we've got with us tonight is uh, goes by one, one of the names, his given name, uh, George Bruno. And uh, welcome, George, man. Love, love having you here and I appreciate you taking time. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Good to be here. Yeah, so I uh, like I said, you know, I started out watching your uh, watching your videos about beard care, and actually um, set up an appointment to go go up to uh, uh, what was the King of Prussia Mall you were working at then, yep. and uh, had you uh, give me a tune up right before my uh, my oldest daughter's wedding, and that was uh, it'll be five years ago in in October, and then we started doing this podcast almost two years ago, and uh, you've been on my my radar as somebody that we would uh, love to have as a guest. And, and, you know, so I've been watching more and more videos and I was even more intrigued about what you're doing now and um, how the subjects have changed and so on. I just think you've got some incredible information to share with our listeners and uh, look forward to, to hearing some of that tonight. Yeah. Great. So I, here's a question I want to ask right out of the blocks. And that is um, the journey that you started on, uh, again, back to, it was just about the beard, I think. And if that's not right, please correct us. But what, yeah, was, was, what, what was, was all through your the head? Men's grooming channel. The men's grooming channel. Okay, perfect. So it's the men's grooming channel. And then as things started to evolve and you, and you started getting these ideas to start presenting on different, different topics in a very authentic and easy to consume way, what, you know, at, at what point did you sort of switch or maybe it was just a you know a casual not a casual um a gradual 
uh, change and now you're up to all kinds of other things. I mean, can you explain that and what your mindset was? And then all of this is cast in the, in the spirit of passing on wisdom of the ages. So the listeners can, can get out of this, what they can to make their lives better. Yeah. Um, it started out as a men's grooming channel. And as I was talking about hair and beards and basically, uh, I have a profession and a trade. I'm a psychotherapist by profession, trained, educated, credentialed, and I also have a trade in that I cut hair. And the, the traditional barber stylist is a guy that takes care of men, you know, from about the shoulders up. And so that has been a wonderful thing. Wonderful thing. My uh, family, it's my family trade. My mom cuts hair, my dad cuts hair. Right. And so it's kind of a, na it's just natural for me. I don't remember a time when I couldn't use a razor or a scissors. I just been doing it forever. And I made it real official when I got my hair cutting license and I'm licensed to cut hair in Pennsylvania and Florida. But as I was doing videos, people would ask me questions all the time about grooming. And it got to the point where people are asking, different people are asking the same question. And I was just answering the same question all the time. And I thought, you know what? I'm just going to start doing videos for my clientele. That is it. And I probably have there's over 100, 150 beard and mustache tutorials. Uh, people will say to me, why don't you do beard videos anymore? And I say, what's the matter? Isn't 150 videos about <laughs> beard enough for you? <laughs> if you haven't it's, figured it out by now, you're probably not going to. Yeah, exactly. You know, it's kind of like Beard University. It's probably, um, you know, probably the most exhaustive channel about men's grooming and i talk about everything from skin care to growing a beard a mustache the proper haircut for your shape head should you shave your head should you buzz your head just every possible every possible combination about men's grooming so they would go into categories and i would rather than just answering a question the same question over and over again i would direct men send them a link or direct them to a video and that was helping them and then it got to the point where i started talking about uh masculinity somebody would say uh, you know well what about this should i do this with my beard or that with my beard and i would say well i think it looks more masculine if you do this and you grow this part out don't shave that don't line this part up or whatever you want to remain as masculine as possible and you're, you're going to be more attractive. You know, I'd say, well, are you single or are you married? You know, they say I'm single. And I'm like, are you looking for a woman? Yes. I'm, I'm open to meeting a woman. All right. For a single guy, this is what I would do. Uh, women are attracted to masculine men. Don't try to be more like a woman. Don't soften yourself up in order to find a woman. Uh, Women like the polarity. Beards are the first example of polarity. Women are soft and pretty and cute. Men are rough and hairy. And uh, beards are a man's natural state of existence. Being clean shaven in the light of history is actually the new thing. Being clean shaven actually is a trend. If you look at history, people call beards a trend i'm like no i don't think so i think being shaving every day is the trend if you look at thousands of years right of men most men had facial hair so and then i got into uh talking about masculinity in society and uh this beard would look good with this but don't don't wear skinny jeans you know and and then I would start getting into these areas of masculinity and femininity. And uh, uh, people started saying, well, I have a date this Friday. What should I wear? What should I do? And so it evolved in that way as a, I was responding to needs that were presented to me. This had nothing to do with personality, had nothing to do with ego. And then it got to the point where um, 
I just, I did as many men's grooming videos as I possibly could. I just can't keep regurgitating the same old stuff. I mean, I'll do a beard, how to trim your beard video now, like this week if I did, and it'll still be like a, a top video because people, I call it like beard porn. People just want, they love watching <laughs> dudes do beard talk. I don't know why, but it's, you know, I found that to be true. But then as I started getting into um, masculinity and relationships, that obviously leads to uh, the topics of divorce, separation, cheating, infidelity, all this kind of the stuff that men deal with. And that's pretty much where it exploded. That's where it, you know, if I looked at a graph, it was just kind of like, just climbing just a little bit. And then when I started talking more about masculinity, boom, it just like that line went straight up and it was an explosion. And I thought to myself, okay, this is interesting. And I got mm. myself a hundred thousand followers. Uh, which see is, that coming. Yeah. Got that right there. And, and I thought, wow, this is really interesting. And I started uh, monetizing my content and, uh, was was making what I call quit your job money. And it got to the point where I was making uh, from the just the channel alone, in addition to my hair cutting, in addition to my side hustles, you know, I was making about 110,000 a year from YouTube. And that wasn't bad for just playing on camera. I don't even have a camera. I don't even have a I, Right now I'm on my phone. And I've even now I'm five years into this and I've never used a camera or like any sophisticated editing. Everything is done on my phone. Isn't that amazing? That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. It's a hundred percent. Thank you, Samsung Galaxy. That's really what it is. And uh, it's a, I, it's the larger cell phone. I think it's the largest cell phone that there is. It's uh, pretty much fills up your back pocket. It's, it's a big phone. Um, and that was because I was, mainly blind and I, I don't know how people can pull out these little tiny these little tiny phones and see anything so for me making a phone call uh, I like big giant numbers you know I'm like I'm about that far from getting like a jitterbug phone you know and, <laughs> and uh, uh, doing like uh, Cialis commercials or something I don't know but the channel grew and grew and grew and then it started taking up my time I started fielding questions through my emails and through messaging systems and and then I saw myself becoming a therapist again and I left that world uh, several years ago because I was burned out doing therapy with people and I swore that I would never do it again and so I kind of converted that therapy model to more of a coaching model which is what I do now and I will I'm coaching anywhere between 12 and 20 men at any given point right now in addition to a couple other jobs that I do and then all the various streams of income so you know it's worked out well but something's going to give real soon and I have to take some, you know, it's one of those things. If you have um, a lot of energy, you can do one thing really, really well. But if you do four things, you're going to do four things half ass. You know what I mean? Yep. And, Absolutely. and I want to concentrate a little bit more on the, the video and the ministry and the coaching business. Um, that's where my money is, that's where my interest is. And that's that's the one thing that I do that doesn't feel like work. Like I I still work two other jobs cutting hair. Mm. And they feel and they feel like work. I get up in the morning and I'm like, ugh, gotta go to work. And the only thing that doesn't feel like work to me is when I'm helping guys. That is it. And it's effortless to me, and it's a blessing. Uh, it pays super well. I'm compensated fairly for it. 
And um, that's where I'm leaning towards right now. So I'm hoping by the end of the year to be uh, just cutting hair, you know, maybe one or two days a week somewhere and uh, doing this kind of thing full time. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. God, God bless you for doing that. And uh, I know you're helping a ton of people. Um, there's two things that jumped out there I want to expand on. The first thing is, um, you know how folks from Alabama and diehard, uh, you know, Crimson Tide fans, they, they end every sentence with roll tide. Uh, yeah. I think we should start a trend to end every sentence with don't wear skinny jeans. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, I, I, I keyed on that. I think that's good advice for anybody, anytime. Don't wear skinny jeans. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> if you want to be, if you want to be masculine. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Those two right. cannot coexist. Uh, right. Or, or the, if you're older than 20. Right. The go. other thing is, uh, as you mentioned the word ministry and we, yep. we had the, the, the good fortune of talking a little bit before this started and uh, kind of expanded upon that a little bit. So um, when you say ministry, um, what, what is your, meaning of that purely uh, literally it's the it's the webster's dictionary of literally rolling up my sleeves and serving people uh, i like to say that i'm not a minister i don't want to be a minister but i want to do ministry so i don't want to do the noun i want to do the verb and uh not unlike you guys, uh, much of my work is uh, imparting wisdom. When I tell a man to, he needs to get himself back and stop trying to get her back, that's from decades. That's from decades of life coming out of my mouth. That's from crying when I was a young man, beating my pillow, drinking myself to sleep, contemplating suicide that stuff is real this is not academic this is not theory this is uh, what i teach is not uh, pie in the sky stuff so i am skilled at the the art and science of triage crisis counseling when a guy is in acute crisis. And when I say acute crisis, his wife of 20 years says she doesn't want to be married anymore. What does he do other than punch a wall, kick the dog, scream, grab her, throw her on the couch, slam a door, and then get told by the police he's got to go somewhere else. And then when he comes back home, the locks on his own home are changed and he gets served with you know, a restraining order and a legal separation notice. Uh, that's where the rubber hits the road and a lot of good, clear men experience that and become very unclear. They become very cloudy in their judgment at that point. And they feel like uh, the biggest temptation when you're going through crisis is there's two things. Number one, that you're the only one going through it. You feel very isolated and number two, that it's never going to end. And it's like a storm going over your head. If you just react to every dark cloud over your head, you're gonna be several layers removed away from the storm. Uh, a man goes through a breakup, he gets drunk to kill the pain. He gets in a car and drives home from the bar. He gets pulled over, gets a DUI. Well, now, He's two problems removed away from the original problem. And men do this onion thing where they just put layers and layers and layers of problems. And then they become identified uh, by their problems. I'm a drunk. Many men start thinking, well, maybe I need psychiatric meds. Maybe there's something wrong with me. Maybe I have a chemical imbalance. No, you're going through pain. And there's a lot of maladaptive behavior right now. So you need to stop. You need to think. The storm is going to pass. It's going to be better. You are alive. You will survive. And I guarantee that. And a lot of people have been through what you've been through and they made it. They need hope for that minute. I remember a professor in college always said, gather data, give hope, gather data, give hope. And uh, just he, he always taught me 
this one professor in my um, therapy training, uh, his whole thing was about hope. He would say, when in doubt, gather data, and then gather data and give hope. And that was it. And I live by that, period. Um, because men aren't thinking about their five-year plan, their 10-year plan when they go through this stuff. Right. They're thinking about a 10-minute plan. How am I going to make it through the night? How am I going to make it to the weekend? So I do a lot of work on like Friday and Saturday nights because that's when people feel the most lonely, the most isolated. And that's um, when the pain hurts. It seems like the pain is always worse at night. So like right after dinner time, the guy starts drinking and starts killing the pain. Um, that's where trouble can start in his life. And then, of course, what's the other thing a guy does when he's going through a divorce or a breakup? He, you know, he ends up having a revolving door on his bedroom. And, you know, spending time with women sexually is, is like drinking. It becomes a drug. It becomes like alcohol that when the drug wears off, the pain is still there. And then you can just end up in this crazy repetitive cycle and it's easier today to get laid i get i see these guys that are like i never had a girlfriend what should i do and i'm thinking like it's never been easier to get laid ever it just it's <laughs> it, it is the i mean it's like women on tap with dating sites and such it's never been easier so a man goes down the moral and ethical slide sliding down that and pain if you don't deal with pain properly you just end up re layer after layer after layer removed from the original source of pain and not unlike the movie platoon which we all know in one of those beginning scenes when forrest whitaker is shot and he's screaming and his commander comes over and covers his mouth and says take the pain because his screaming is going to give their location to the enemy. And he said, take the pain, take the pain. And Forrest Whitaker is just laying there after being shot, just screaming. And he just de-escalates. Ah, 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 ah. Okay, now breathe. Like that. And what happens is when we're flailing in pain, the enemy identifies us mm. and makes it worse. Mm. And if we literally, literally take the pain, experience it, guess what? You don't have to experience it tomorrow. If you drink it away tonight, it'll be back tomorrow. But if you take it now, you can function tomorrow. And the idea is not unlike AA would say, how they say one day at a time, with a man who's going through a divorce or a breakup, it's one hour at a time. And many of these men say have spent their whole life saying, oh, I don't know what I would do without her. I love my girl. I love my wife. Man, if she ever left, my world would, would be gone. I would just die without her. Guess what? If you keep saying that you will die without her when she's gone, you will die. The death process will start. And that's what you're experiencing because you trained yourself to die, not train yourself to live. It's like... Uh, Steve Williams and I talked about the other night, a man's proper attitude with his woman should be, I love you. I am crazy about you. I really do love you, sweetie, but I love myself that much more. <laughs> and that's what helps me have my pride yeah. because now check this out. I knew a guy whose wife threatened divorce all the time. That's it. We're done. We're going to get a divorce. And this was the cycle for years and years and years. And finally, he grew a set of balls. And he learned to love himself that much more. And when she pulled that, that's it. I'm getting a divorce. This marriage is over. And he's used to her doing this every time they had a conflict. And he replies, you know what? If you leave, I'll be okay. She stopped. That was the beginning of the restoration of their marriage. All of those cries for help. I want to get a divorce. Was her silently begging him to man up 
and be the man, grow a set of balls, don't make me be the man, don't make me play the masculine role because a woman will resent you if you put her in that role. What do you want to do for dinner? I don't know. What do you want to do? I don't know. What do you want to do? I don't know. What do you want to do? <laughs> Women hate that. What they want is we're going to such and such a restaurant. This is the attire. I would like you to wear this. The reservation's at seven. We need to leave at 6.30. Instantly, instantly, she's on it because he's taken the role as a man. There's no quicker way to dry a woman up like the Sahara Desert <laughs> then to tell her, then to tell her, I don't know, what do you want to do? When she says, what do you want to do? Where should we eat? What should we eat? Son of a gun. You better have an answer or make one up real quick. Because okay. a woman will shit test you probably five. I don't care. I don't care if it's the Virgin Mary. I don't care if it's Mother Teresa. A woman will shit test a man five to 10 times a day just to make sure he's a man. It's in her nature. She wants to be safe. She wants to be secure. She wants to make sure she's with a man. If he doesn't do that, you might as well go shoe shopping with her because you're nothing but her girlfriend if you don't assume the role of a man. I love it. Yeah. I Man, that, that's powerful I, stuff. I, I, there was and no, I know, I know, there's people yeah. out there that'll listen to this, going, "Oh shit, yeah, I, I, yeah. I need, to, I need to make some changes." Well, well, let me tell you why, and then I want to ask you another question, George. The, the reason yeah. they're saying "oh shit" is because to be a man in in today's world is, I mean, it's constantly under attack. I mean, it, it is not. Uh, to be masculine, to be a man is, is just not a very popular thing to do in the, the public square. So right. um, the fact that you're choosing to minister to men, to serve men in this way is, um, I mean, it's a, you're, you're stemming the tide a little bit. And how do you, well, first of all, what do you think about that? And how do you deal with it? Well, I posted a picture on Gab yesterday and I showed what some of the modern male mannequins look like in department stores. And they actually have pot bellies and man boobs. <laughs> I mean, they are they the really? most wow. They are the most pathetic looking men I've ever seen. And I and I said, is there a war on men or or is life just imitating art? Because I believe that different cultures in centuries past portrayed men different. And I put a picture of that mannequin up next to uh, a picture of the Greek statue, uh. which the guy's jacked, looks great, you know, like looks like a natural bodybuilder kind of thing. You look at like the statue of David or something mm -hmm. like that, which is considered right. the golden ratio of, of male physique. Portion, uh, yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah, you mentioned that so, video that you did the other night, man. I enjoyed the heck out of that. I, I would encourage others to uh, to watch it. I, I made note of the uh, of the title of that, and uh, it's what it's first things to do after a breakup: a guide for men. Yep. And uh, man, it was uh, it was cool listening to uh, everything that you and Steve had to say. And, and I would encourage folks to listen to that, especially if you're you know dealing with that circumstance yourself. Um, powerful, powerful information in there to check out. Yeah, you know, and and Steve is um, he's the blackest white guy I know, and I'm the whitest black guy he knows. <laughs> so we we literally we I actually met him. I don't know, probably I'm guessing two years ago. And we hit it off right away. And uh, his father is Ted Williams, who is if you've ever watched Fox News, there is that uh, Washington D.C. detective Ted Williams. Uh, and they have him as a talking head commenting on every school shooting and every murder. And he's a very famous, famous guy. If you've ever seen Ted Williams, that's Steve's father. So he literally grew up with this famous detective, this this man that can look at someone and tell you if they're lying or not. You know, like within three seconds, he would he would just like be questioning a suspect and. And the guy would open his mouth for five seconds and Detective Williams would be like, you're lying. <laughs> you know, 
like he knew it. He could just tell by the way the guy's facial expressions were. And I mean, the guy is absolutely brilliant, but that's Steve. So he grew up like that. And uh, Steve uh, keeps it real. As he likes to say, he keeps it real. So we hit it off really well. Yeah, and I love what you guys were saying about the the difference between the information that you share, um, you know, being real world experience and and not theory and not uh, you know from these so called content creators. And yeah. uh, I think that's powerful because it people can relate to it because they can yeah. see themselves in that that same circumstance or they may actually be in that same circumstance right now, and uh, and they need to hear that that wisdom that you are sharing um, because of the experiences that you've had. And well, I did you see cool. my interview with John Fitch, the uh, UFC champion? He's a world champion. He's, I forget, he only has just a couple defeats. But, you know, you get in the ring, no gloves on. You're just beating the crap out of each other and anything goes. I mean, he's, an, he's, a, he's won so many belts uh, doing that. And I said, what's it like when you got a guy down, you know, you got him in a leg lock and like, you know, and you just like knocked him out. He says... He goes, the biggest thing there is you have to make sure you don't do it out of anger because you want to keep beating them. He goes, one punch might knock them out. The next punch might wake them up. He goes, and I want to keep them out. <laughs> <laughs> how, how would I ever know that? I mean, like, unless I was right. in the ring, right. like bare knuckle doing that, like anything goes kind of fighting. I didn't know that you could wake somebody up with a punch. I mean, if the goal yeah, is to I, I knock not them heard out, that either. Right. right. Yeah. I and, thought and he said, kill him. right yeah First exactly one, right right, right you you think once you knock the guy out if you're if you let your emotions get into it you just keep just keep pounding and pounding and he learned that if the guy's out you just back off there's no need for tapping out there's no need for the road you know a knockout is a knockout i just didn't know that you could wake somebody up with the second punch <laughs> but that's real world experience. You're not going to learn that. We're, we, you got to learn that in a book. You right. know, right. But have you experienced pushback on, on some of the stuff you're doing from, from anybody, uh, you know, on, uh, on the fact that you're, you're, you're helping men be, be men and, and be masculine. Fe yeah. Yeah. You don't help men be masculine without helping women be feminine. Um, uh, right. A lot of women get divorced. They cut their hair short. They put a purple streak in it. Uh, you know, they get they get the nose pierced or some yeah. like weird stuff like that. Uh, women, I have an amazing following of women who are wearing dresses, and they're like, "Thank you so much." I just, I never wore. I have women who say to me, "I never wore a dress before," and they feel feminine. And if you and if you look at millennials, women in their early uh, to late twenties, they're going to knitting classes, cooking classes. They're making their own clothes. It's making a comeback. Whereas the boomers and Generation X, those women wanted to show. They wanted to, uh, you know, break the glass ceiling. Uh, climb the corporate ladder, delay childbearing till they're 40, and have it all. And you can't have it all. And what's happening is there's a cry amongst women right now that uh, one woman writes me and she says, I love your channel. And I said, why? Like, she says, because you're showing me that there's real men that are still out there. And you're showing me how I need to amp up my femininity. You don't be like a man to get a man, and a man doesn't become more like a woman to get a woman. So uh, my friend Jennifer Molesky would say something like, ladies, you go on a date with a man, uh, you spend three hours in the restaurant telling him how much of a strong, independent woman you are, and then you wonder why he wants to go Dutch at the end of the date. And What's what's happening is if a woman amps up her femininity, grows her hair out, wears dresses, becomes more ladylike, she will be treated more like a lady. 
The same woman said to me, I'm having such a hard time dating. And I said, why is that? She says, because I, she goes, I want to find a man who doesn't cry or I want to find a man who, uh, no, I keep meeting men who cry more than I do. That's what she said. You know, they, they found their feminine side. Softness is not a masculine virtue. Uh, I did a, a podcast a couple of years ago and a guy said to me, when is it okay for a man to cry? I said, birth and death. <laughs> in, in between, like when your kids are born and you see that, the tears just flow. They just, honestly, they just flow. Uh, when someone dies, let it rip. But in between that, forget it. Forget it. Delay that emotion. Get rid of it. I'm not saying be an, an ass about it, but the reality is women cry. Women are emotional. Men have to be a rock. Women will resent you. I tell men all the time, be the rock. Don't make her the rock. She will resent you if she has to play a masculine role and man up in that marriage or that relationship, period. So that's the first thing that I work with men on is literally just becoming men, period. What's the first thing you can do? Go work on your body. Does that mean you have to become a bodybuilder? No, but all the women I know that I've talked to, they, I literally, I, I did a, uh, I did a video a couple years ago that's on my channel called "Can Men and Women Be Friends?" And I had a female friend, and I said to her, "Do you feel safe with me?" She says, "Absolutely, absolutely." She goes, "I feel safe and secure." I said, "Good." I said, "Now you're out there dating?" She says, "Yes." I said, "Do you ever meet men that you're not safe with?" She says, "Almost every one." because they try to soften themselves up to appeal to me. Now there's a difference between being masculine and being macho. Macho is just asshole. Right. That's all that is. Yeah. Masculine is literally a virtue. Being masculine is a virtue. Just like being honest is a virtue. You cheat your woman out of everything that she needs when you act less than masculine. Never put her in the role of having to make decisions and be the rock. Never. A woman would go to a restaurant that she doesn't like if she loves you. And that's, you know, you don't need to be shit testing your woman and doing that to her. But the reality is this, is that when, you've, when you make the plans and you are decisive, a woman, a woman is a decisiveness needer. She's a walking, talking, living, breathing, decisiveness meter. They like men that are wishy-washy. I mean, that aren't wishy-washy and that are decisive. A woman, a, when a, even, even in marriages, a man can fix his marriage by being more decisive. Yep. Yeah, so here's a question that I've, I've come across numerous times that I'll, I'll hear people say, um, and it's a, uh, it's a comment, and this kind of goes... Uh, in the same vein of, of something you've talked about here recently and, and men and their self-deprecating uh, conversations about themselves and so on. Yeah. Um, yeah. I hear guys say something like this and it drives me nuts. They'll say, um, you know, like I, I love riding motorcycles. I, I as, as you do. And um, you know, I'll have a guy say, yeah, I, I, I can't get a motorcycle. My wife won't let me. And that just, Oh, that just that drives me through the roof. At, at that point, I think it's okay to cry for that man. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever I hear a man say, my wife won't let me, I, all I keep thinking is, where, where does she hide your balls? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. You know, this is, what I tell, this is what I tell men who have a wife that says, or, or that, that say, my wife won't let me do this or won't let me do that. And I pick that up usually within a first uh, session or two when, when I hear people, re when I hear men refer to their wife as, oh, my better half, or let me check with the boss, like that, like those kind of submissive male phrases. Uh, I give them homework and I say, you need to join a gym. Well, I already go to a gym. 
I said, okay, when do you go? I go after work a couple nights a week. I'm like, okay, this is what I want you to do. Get up at four o'clock in the morning, have your coffee, put on your gym clothes and go to the gym. Most gyms are open pretty early. If you go to Planet Fitness, which is in every freaking city, mm-hmm. they're open 24 seven. Your wife's going to say, where are you going at 4.30 in the morning? Now, if you leave the house at 7.30 at night, she'll say, where are you going at 7.30 at <laughs> night? But if you leave the house at 4.30 in the morning, where are you going at 4.30? I'm going to the gym. Ooh, the dry desert starts flowing again. <laughs> you, you, the river starts flowing again. All of a sudden, a woman... A woman hates a man who sacrifices everything for her. Like men think that we got to just lay our lives down. And that's, you know, we expend ourselves for them. A woman likes a man who takes care of himself. So when you're leaving the house at 430 to be at the gym by five and you're taking care of yourself. And when you come back and she says, how was your workout? Fantastic. I feel good. You do it again the next day or the next day or the next day. You know what? She's starting to dig you. (laughs) Yeah. Yep. It's going to be revived. It's going to come back. That's my first homework assignment. Take care of the body. Fake it till you make it. Okay. You might not really be believing it in your head, but just make your body go through the motions and she will see that. And I teach men all the time about women. Believe what she does not what she says so if you were going to adopt that attitude in your intergender relationships the best thing you can do is do it yourself stop talking about being fit and get fit don't oh i gotta fit in a workout (laughs) honey i'll be home because i'm going to the gym after work get up early in the morning and go to the gym, period. That that right there will change your woman's opinion of you. That's right there. That's just going to stir her up. And going to bed early, not, not using sugar, minimizing carbs, increasing your protein. Um, and then when you tell her, man, my pants are just falling off, those 38 waist jeans are without a belt they're just dropping down to my i gotta go get buy some 36s and she's like whoa that working out really is working (laughs) wait till you get down to 34 you know and what's going to happen is you're i mean she's going to want you to caveman her throw her over your shoulder and (laughs) you know take her in the bedroom and and i've worked with men who've been married you know five years and men who are married for 35 years, and this works 100% of the time. I know guys, I know a guy right now, first thing he said to me, I haven't had sex with my wife in five years. I said, okay, why is that? Well, I sleep in the guest bedroom every night. I said, okay. He says, well, I snore really loud. And my wife said she can't sleep when I snore. And I go, hmm. You can get away with telling other people that. You're not going to get away with telling me that because I see right through your bullshit right now. What does your snoring have to do with her not having sex with you? Has, you can have sex during the day or in the afternoon. It doesn't have to be at night before you go to bed. Right. So I, didn't, I saw right through men's bullshit. Men, men are so great at pulling the wool over their own eyes. When they meet someone who sees through the bullshit, they literally, they stop in their tracks and they think. So I challenged this guy, you need to lose weight. You need to start working out. And then I hate to use vulgar language, although sometimes I do. And I got, I get, I got uninvited from a Christian conference once because I, someone watched a video and I cursed and basically but i i said to him i said uh and i'm gonna use i'm gonna use a bad word right now i go would you fuck you if you were a woman <laughs> don't worry we've Lang- used that word many That's times right. language of that nature is completely acceptable right. on this right. podcast yeah. and somewhat encouraged 
Yeah. And he said, <laughs> no. I said, okay, there's your homework assignment. Start working on yourself. So let me connect uh, some dots here. I want that. Uh, and if I don't connect them correctly, then please um, fix, fix me. Um, yeah. So um, not only do you get the positive feedback from the men, but you're getting positive feedback from the women. You're helping relationships um, recover and improve over time. And, and as a result of all of that, you're just not paying attention to some of the noise out there that's, uh, that's barking at you for, for preaching a message that isn't consistent with much of which is out there in the public square saying, no, toxic masculinity and all this shit that's going on. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I love that, actually. Yeah. yeah. It's counter. I think we need, we, yeah, we need more of it because right. otherwise they're going to continue to gain ground. So we, we need to have the counter assault of pushing back and teaching other men how to be actual men yeah. and behave that way and not be ashamed of being that way because that's the way we're supposed to be. It's easy to be a rebel in 2021. Don't do drugs. Don't get drunk. Control your weight. Get married. Have children. Go to church. Read to your kids. That's that's being a rebel. Mm. That's being <laughs> counterculture now. Yeah, it really in 2021, is. if you think about it. Right. Right. Yeah. And, and when you say it out loud, it just sounds freaking ridiculous. It does. Right. You know that it's that it's come to that. I'm at the point now on social media where I say, good morning, right-wing extremists. How are you today? <laughs> so now now we're starting to get a glimpse of how you got banned from Twitter. <laughs> yes, yes. I love that. You're in great company. 18,000 followers gone with one tweet. Mm. Is that right? Yeah. See, now, now, just think about that. I mean, that's a badge of honor, that, man. Well, it's just, it shows you to me, this is what that says. It, it says that people are so shallow yeah. that, that when they, you know, when something like that happens, they can't take it, that they, they can't handle it. So they have to cancel you. I mean, it's just unbelievable. I, it's, it really is. Yeah. And I don't, and I, I don't I even think, know what the comment was. And, and, you know, it, I, I can say, you know, confidently it, it couldn't have been so egregious to, to have that kind of a response. Right. Uh, I basically said, if you want to change your child's gender, that's child abuse. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Dude, dude, we're on the right. same page there. Right. I just had that conversation with my wife. Yeah. Um, she works in a public school and uh, th this particular county um, got a lot of pressure because there was a, a six-year-old whose parents uh, thought, you know, the six-year-old claimed that uh, he didn't identify as a male. He wanted to identify as a female and his parents are supporting this and pushing the school system to allow him to use the female restroom and so on. And ultimately, the school system had the good sense to allow this young man to use the adult ladies room. Um, and that solved the problem. I don't think that accomplished what the parents were out, you know, setting out to do. Um, and at the same time, it took away their argument, right? So now he's got the ability to use the ladies room. But, um, you know, he's not commingling with, you know, females that were made that way by their creator. Yeah. I uh, honestly, you know, a six year old doesn't have the mental capacity to make that choice. Right. Uh, when I was four, I wanted to be a fire truck. When I was five, I wanted to be the abominable snowman right. Right. on uh, Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer. When I was six, I didn't, you know how like kids say, I want to be an astronaut. I want to be a doctor. I want, you know, that kind of thing. Up until about six or seven. Yeah. I wanted to be a fire truck. I wanted to be the Yeti. I want, you know, like, cause that's the mentality of a child that age. Right. I can't even friggin' imagine any of my kids telling me that they want to be the opposite gender. And when that crap, uh, first of all, that comes, that's basically a feat. That's from a, a parents where the man is really the woman in the family let's get real the the, the woman wears the pants right. in that family and the man really is the wife uh that man never set boundaries with his wife if he allows his children to do that it's absolute uh, child abuse 100 percent child abuse and those that support yep. it yep um have ulterior motives right <clears throat> Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. So <laughs> apparently you get banned from Twitter for speaking the truth. 
Oh, of course. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Sure. Yeah. Of course. Well, in, in medieval times, they pulled the tongues out of truth tellers. Now they just cancel them. Same thing. Right. Right. Wow. Yeah. Hey, I want to change subjects real quick. I think I heard you at one point in, in one of your videos, you know, you, you said tonight that your father is, is a barber. And uh, I, I want to say that I heard you say something to the effect of that he's going to die with a pair of scissors in his hand. Uh, yeah. Because, you know, he enjoys it that much. This is a second career for him. And, um, you know, he just he's going to keep doing it because that, that's what he loves. And what that uh, reminded me of, and I would imagine you're familiar with this term, and I may pronounce it wrong, but it's a Japanese term called ikigai. Are, are you familiar with that? Um, it sounds familiar. Explain it to me. So, so ultimately, you know, it talks about the, uh, the American culture is somewhat unique in the fact, there's a book about it, but um, it, it talks about our culture somewhat unique in the retirement minded focus that we have. And that, you know, we've got this in our heads that we're going to work until a certain age, and then we're going to retire and just, you know, do whatever. And unfortunately, a lot of people retire and just waste away and die. And the, the whole theory yeah. behind that icky guy is, you know, you do something that you love so much, you can continue to do it right up until the day you drop dead, because it is something that is that integral to who you are as a person and you enjoy it so much. And I just, I thought that was cool when I heard, I heard you say, say that about your father. Yeah. I, I don't, retirement is a uh, relatively new concept, just like being clean shaven. People work their trade. Uh, I remember watching a, I don't know if it was 60 Minutes or one of those kind of programs where there was a 100-year-old year a 100 year old architect, and they said to him, you know, what's the secret to uh, living to 100? His answer was, don't die. <laughs> <laughs> That's profound. And, yeah, and he, he went to work for a few hours every day. Obviously, you don't have the endurance, uh, you know, when you're older, uh, but Think about the intellectual capital of people with gray hair. Yeah. You know, uh, I never, I never thought that the phrase "baby boomer" would be an insult until twenty-five-year-olds would reply, to, like real punk-ass twenty-five-year-olds would say to me, "Okay, boomer, okay, boomer." You know, they like that's their response. Like, and mm. and it would never occur to me to disrespect somebody who's older it wouldn't it as a matter right. of fact when i was growing up if you right. disrespected an elder they'd smack the shit out of you right and take your take you to your father who then would smack the shit out of you again right. yep yeah yep. in front of the guy that you embarrassed yep. and the reality is uh there's a lot of disrespect out there but those are the guys that are killing themselves those are the guys that are cutting their dicks off and saying i'm a woman <laughs> those are the guys who can't they can't uh, find a woman. Those are the those are the guys that are bitching about women are horrible, women are bad. I'm like, mm, no, you're just not a man. Right. You know, I do agree that the state of women is different now than it was 20 years ago. Um, I joke around about the 1955 housewife. I post pictures like these watercolor pictures of women in aprons and pulling dinner out of the oven and you know this kind of thing and baking a cake and cutting the birthday cake and uh, lighting her husband's pipe and this kind of stuff and of course i just troll a lot of people right by doing right. It. <laughs> that was my mother by the way that is that was yeah. my mother that's right cool. exactly right and that's and that's my mother too right so what's fascinating is um when i talk when i talk about um uh, almost tongue-in-cheek about the 1955 housewife that's when the women are coming out of the woodwork the haters aren't coming out it's the women who are like i like cooking right i want some more of that I I like bring us back right and right. and what's what's fascinating is i i've been divorced for about 18 years now and dated like a madman and and ran through women like a hot knife through butter and uh, either had something to prove or I was deadening the pain and, and all that. And it was ridiculous. It was, it was really ridiculous. And, uh, you know, people say to me, because um, I remember when I was young and growing up, I remember at about six years old, I really wanted to become a priest. 
literally, I had my first Holy Communion. I wanted to become a priest. I had that, um, that attitude until I was about 14. And I probably got my first boner wondering what the hell is this? <laughs> and, or maybe 13 or something like that. And then I'm thinking like, uh, maybe I, that priest thing ain't going to work out so yeah. much right now. Right, right. And then I turned 60 and I'm like, you know what? Maybe I could yeah. become a priest. So, <laughs> <laughs> so what's, what's happening is, what's happening is uh, we, we misplace, mishandle our sexuality right from the get go. I never, I never had the talk with my dad. I'll never forget the first time I went out with a girl at 14 years old and I'm totally outing him right now. And I got back at like midnight and tiptoeing in the house, taking my sneakers off, tiptoeing in the house, all of a sudden click and the kitchen light goes on. <laughs> and I'm like, oh shit, he's going to kick my ass. And what did he do? He grabs my hand and goes, <laughs> smells it no <laughs> way that is awesome that no way. and then he looked at me and, and went like well that. done son well done <laughs> and went back to bed now it's one of the best stories i've ever heard up. that's awesome that's how i grew up with that kind of father okay. yeah we we need so, more dads like that in the world oh uh, so wow Again, this is street smarts. This is yeah. this is not theory. This is right. so I, I came up that way. That's that's <laughs> how I, I grew up. Uh -oh. And then um can't wait to tell my wife that yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> I'm even then I, I'm nodding along as a father of two daughters. I'm just not <laughs> and, and, and I, two female grandchildren, two granddaughters. Yeah, I'm just nodding along. <laughs> but yeah. I I agree. I, I mean I that's that's the world I grew up in. I, I didn't have that same experience with my father, but uh, at the same time, uh, that's that's cool. That's funny. It is, and I I tell that with uh, you know a smirk on my face, and uh, you know I used to be embarrassed about that, but you know what? That's what made me who I am. I can't separate myself from my experiences. But these women, uh, I I like to tell men pursue excellence and then excellence will pursue you. And sometimes that excellence comes in the shape of a woman. And what happens is when you pursue excellence, and I always tell men all the time, suck your stomach in, put your shoulders back, stick your chest out, your head up high, walk 25% faster than everyone else, wherever you go. People will wonder, what are you doing? Where are you going? Like you're a man with a purpose. Uh, you're a man who has somewhere to go. And that automatically communicates the signal to people that you're important and that you value your time. So when you do that, when you pursue excellence, uh, you automatically eliminate incompetence. When a man is excellent, incompetent women don't even, don't even come near you because what happens is they think to themselves, he would never like me. And they're right. Right. <laughs> because a man who's excellent will attract a woman who is excellent. A man who is masculine is gonna attract a woman who is feminine. Uh, at my age, I am attracting women half my age, not bragging, but I would never take advantage of it because what do I have in common with a woman who's half my age? Right. I'm not interested in that. My daughter's 25, so I'm not interested in, you know, a, 30 year old woman, but they make themselves known to me all the time, along with a lot of really cool women all the time. Um, I was, uh, well, Agnieszka from Poland right. is a good example, made herself known to me. I didn't know her from, like, why would I attract a woman from 5,000 miles away? Right. You know. How, how could that even happen? And it happened. So pursue excellence. Excellence will pursue you. I tell men, uh, chase excellence, pursue excellence, not women. Stop chasing women. Stop it. You don't chase women. You attract them, mm. period. If you land a woman from chasing her, 
she is literally just going to go to the, the next highest bidder. That's just the way things are. That's the way women are built. I'm not going to hold it against them. Fish swim, but I'm not going to accuse the fish of swimming because that's what fish do. You know, it's the the uh, scorpion and the frog uh, scenario. Right. There's certain things that women do that women do, period. They're always testing our strength all the time, otherwise known as a shit test all the time. If you attract a woman, because women are attracted to men who love themselves that much more. If you show a little bit of indifference, a little bit of indifference, like my one buddy did, you know, if you leave, I'll be okay. That right there is magnetic for most women. Uh, it puts a little dread in them. When you start, I know, I know women that don't want their men to work out. Because if he starts working out, then he'll start attracting other women. Right. <laughs> I know a guy who actually said that, uh, who told me that, that his wife was worried that he was going to become attractive to other women because he started working out. Ooh. man this is the same guy who sleeps in the in the guest bedroom right. who, yeah. who, who uh you know when he says i haven't had sex in five years i'm the only guy in the world who has the balls to tell him that doesn't mean your your wife hasn't had sex in five years oh there yeah. you go that's exactly right. exactly yep. and yep. that's cold hard truth that sometimes right. men need to face right yep and then there's that there's that uh, that deafening silence. Yeah. That deafening silence. Right. Yeah. That comes with the real uh, comes with the realization that he's right. You know, because that's truth. Exactly. That's absolute truth. Exactly. It's like don't hate me because I'm right. You know. Yeah. So. Yeah. Wow. This has been some. Uh, it's, first of all, this has been extremely enjoyable to to listen to you chat, and uh, you're you're very good at what you do. That's for sure. But uh, you know, back to the theme of our podcast, some serious wisdom of the ages being oh my passed, goodness, being kicked you know, we, around here. I, I got to throw this marine math out that that I was doing when, uh -oh. when we were talking. That uh -oh. uh, did you have enough? You know, there's fingers. Yeah, I, I had enough. Um, you know, the, the the conversation that we're having here tonight is is made up of roughly over 170 years of life experience there you go you know we yeah. uh these these gray hairs don't come by accident right we've been around right. we've traveled some miles and um the wrinkles and the gray hairs we've we've earned along the way they're badges of honor and survival yeah. agreed yeah so man powerful stuff I, uh, I can't thank you enough, George. And I, uh, I know we're just scratching the surface of things that, uh, that you could share with folks. And, uh, uh, if, if, uh, if, if you would, I know you don't broadcast, you know, when you're going to do live things and so on, but, uh, I know some of our listeners are going to want to hear, um, how they can hear more from you or see more from you. So where's the, where's the best way to find you? The best way to find me, there's a couple places I'm on YouTube. Just look up my name, George Bruno. And there's something there for everybody, male or female, young or old. Uh, I am sure to offend some people. Other people will find my words to be a healing bomb. Other people will view it as a kick in the pants that they need. Uh, they will learn to get unstuck by watching me over a long period of time. I like to uh, uh, describe myself as kind of like the IV drip of motivation. Like <laughs> you might listen to one episode and go, yeah, he, he's okay. But I say, listen to me over a long period of time. I'm the IV drip. Boom. 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 And you'll find yourself getting stronger, more yeah. rational. So YouTube is a great place. Yeah. Gab is another place at gab.com. Just look me up. Same thing at George Bruno. Uh, and then also, if people go to georgebruno.com and sign up for my newsletter, uh, I write much better than I talk, and I'm much more focused when I write. So when I put out a private newsletter, um, it's meant to literally equip you with what you need to live life. And I've never, ever had a bad review of my newsletter. 
That's cool. I actually, uh, I went on your website today and signed up for that newsletter. So I'm, uh, I'm eager to see the information you put out there. That's, uh, that's good stuff. Thank you. Um, man, any, uh, any parting thoughts, Kevin? No, no, no. I, I, uh, I will replay this conversation. Well, yeah, I guess there is. I will replay this conversation many times in my head uh, to, uh, yeah, healing balm. Uh, that's, uh, I can see that coming across. And as I said earlier, I'm a fairly new um, exposure to you. And, uh, and I've had a chance to, uh, to consume as much as you can within reason <laughs> within, a, within a few days. Uh, yeah. But, uh, yeah. Well, you just got, the, you just got uh, the drinking from a fire hose treatment. <laughs> so <laughs> it all, it stuff, all came man. out. It's no, it's great stuff. And I, and I hope you felt like it was worth your time as well. I'm, I'm sure you absolutely you did. Yeah, we, so. we greatly appreciate it. And one thing I, I want to call out, it's something you said the other night on the, uh, the broadcast that you did with Steve is when, uh, when folks spend time watching uh, either videos or, or listening to, to podcasts, um, people really need to evaluate how they feel when they're done uh, watching or listening to one of these things, yeah. because, you know, it's, it's intended to be yeah. uplifting and informative. And, you know, if you, uh, if, <laughs> if you're listening to stuff that causes you to feel uh, the same or worse than when you started listening to it, maybe you should find some other stuff to listen to and watch. Right. Yeah. I, um, I tr try to, I like to say that there's something for everybody and I want everyone to extract a nugget out of every single broadcast that I do. Um, personally, like I, I don't watch a lot of other guys doing this stuff. Uh, I've been watching a lot of Orthodox priests recently uh, for some weird reason. I'm really enjoying them. But uh, I regularly watch homesteading YouTube channels. I watch camping and survivalist videos. And I just, I love watching those things. Mm -hmm. And they just make me feel more equipped about life. You know, what would I do if I was out in the woods or, you know, uh, would, how would I live if I only had a knife and a tarp? You know, right, I love right. that kind of stuff. Right. Yeah. It gives me hope. There That's you go. Cool. There you go. Well, hey, George, we're, uh, we, we didn't give a chance, get a chance to or take the time to talk about how we close this thing out each time, but we, we're going to need you to, to help, help us out with our signature sign off. And I know this will fit right in with your mindset um, because we believe in enjoying the ride. And, uh, you know, uh, that's what life's about. This, this journey we, we're on is a ride and uh, it's important that you take time to enjoy it. So I'm going to, I'm going to hit this little button here. That's the phrase. Enjoy the ride. When we yep, get there. Enjoy the ride. I'm a, you ready? I'm ready. And Kevin Come has on. to remind me to hit this button yeah. sometimes. Yeah. Cause I'll, I'll get to talking and completely forget about it. And uh, just follow his lead. No matter who you are, where you are, or what you're doing between this podcast and the next, make sure you take time to, to enjoy, enjoy the ride. ride. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Great Bay Chronicles. Please subscribe so you'll receive notification when new episodes are available. To learn more about the Greybeards, visit their website, greybeardchronicles.com.